Hello everybody, RV living with the geezer. And uh, I'm heading back home from Azel, Texas. And uh, beautiful day out here. <clears throat> and I had several uh, several comments when I asked for uh, ideas about what to talk about. Uh, several of y'all wanted to know how I came along getting Blanca. So that's what we're going to talk about this afternoon. Let's see here. Starting out, no, I knew this red light would get me. Yep. All right. Starting out, uh, my son, when he was going to college, he got a he got a boxer, a white boxer named Helen, and she was deaf. Okay. And uh, I I got attached to Helen pretty good through the years he had her. Helen was a really good dog. He named her after Helen Keller. But, uh, so I really got attached to Helen and I wanted to get a boxer. And so that's sort of the background of that. But uh, in 2000 and, let's see, when was it? 2008, I moved up to uh, Colorado for almost a year. I lived up north of Denver and then uh, things didn't work out up there. So I moved back and I'd lost my lab uh, like a year before. I had a <clears throat> big old yellow lab named Clyde. He lived to be about 15 and I lost him the uh, a year before. And uh, so I moved back from Colorado I need to speed this up because it's a long story. Moved back from Colorado and uh, I got a little cabin in Center Point. Not, no, in Comfort. I got a little cabin in Comfort. And uh, I used to get the newspaper. I, I bought a newspaper. That's back when newspapers were popular. And they, they would, every week they would the San Antonio dog shelter would put a, a, a picture of a dog in there. Well, they had a picture of a white boxer. And so I drove all the way down there and from comfort to the south side of San Antonio, it's probably 50 miles. I drove all the way down there and they said, no, sir, we, uh, that dog got adopted like two weeks ago. I said, well, why'd you have it in the paper yesterday? Well, you can go look through our kennel. So I said, well, I don't want to do that because I'll see a dog that I really don't want and probably adopt, adopt it. Well, I walked through there and uh, I found Blanca, okay. She was in like, a ken uh, like in a cage way down at the end, sitting there looking at me. She's like a year and a half old, they said. So I ended up adopting, I, I said, well, I love this little dog with the ring around her eye. Reminded me of the dog that was on the Little Rascals. Uh, Peavy was that dog's name. So uh, all these red lights today are getting me. Uh, that was a quick one. So uh, I took her home and they said they had named her Asia there in the... Uh, in the shelter. This place is huge, that San Antonio shelter. There was three buildings that each housed like probably 200 dogs. So, I mean, it was huge. I, I just walked through that first one and found her. And, uh, but oh, oh, to get her, uh, there was some paperwork to do and I had to pay like $80 she'd already had her shots and she was chipped and uh, to get her though for them to let me have her I had to give them some some type of proof that I had a fenced yard 
Now that didn't make much sense to me at all because if they want to get dogs out of that shelter, you know, having a fenced yard is a little bit much. Well, I did not have a fenced yard. I was renting a 400 square foot cabin in comfort with no, no yard to speak of. And uh, so I wasn't worried about her running off because she would always been with me, you know. <clears throat> so what I did, they said, well, we have to talk to your landlord. Well, my landlord was about 90 years old. I hardly, I, I never talked to him. I just mailed him a check. Uh, checks were, yeah, checks were in use back in those days. I mailed him a check every month for my rent. He wouldn't have known me much from Adam. He had about 80 rent houses that he rented out. And, uh, but there was a gal out there, a real good friend of mine named Mickey. And Mickey was sort of in charge of the place he had there. There were like five cabins. And uh, back then I was paying like $400 a month for this cabin. So I said, I just called Mickey up. I stepped aside from the people that were there and I called Mickey up and I said, hey Mickey, I'm gonna put you on the phone with some people here and uh, I'm gonna tell them you're my landlord and you just tell them that I have a fenced yard. So of course she did. So uh, yeah, I got Blanca <clears throat> and brought her home and uh, halfway home, you know, I. Like I say, they had her name to uh, Asia. I said, well, that's not gonna work. So I'm trying to figure out a name for her. And, uh, uh, I just looked at her and, you know, white as she could be, just Blanca. So, uh, so that's how I got her. And uh, she more or less, uh, that dog more or less rescued, uh, rescued me. I didn't rescue her. I'd been through some, uh, the year before I got her was when I got a divorce after 26 years and it, you know, wasn't, uh, it wasn't a pleasant thing at all and uh, I'd gone up to Colorado and on another uh, little adventure that didn't work out and uh, I was pretty much, a, uh, pretty much a mess at that time just being real uh, honest with y'all. So, uh, Blanca, is, uh, she's really, really rescued me. And, uh, you know, she's 14 now. And uh, it just, uh, it's uh, just, I don't know, guys. But uh, anyway, that's, that's the story of me getting, uh, getting Blanca and uh, got her out of the shelter in San Antonio and had to tell a little white lie about having a fenced yard and, and uh, everything worked out really good. She's really been a blessing to me and, and uh, is a blessing to me. So anyway, that's it. That's my story and I'm sticking to it. Now I've had about, oh, six or eight of you when I asked for those uh, uh, to suggest something for me to talk about, about six or eight of you asked to hear about how I got Blanca. So that's that might have been close to number one on the list. The other one was my uh, fire department exploits, uh, talking about the guys that I work with down there and I uh, had quite a few requests for that one, so those will be coming up too, but I'll, I'll sort of spread all this stuff out, you know. We'll do some other things up here. Got some pretty areas to look at up here in Boyd. So, yeah, I'm gonna turn off on this country road here, just up here in a little bit, and that's when I'll shut this video down. Uh, YouTube came in and did an update on my phone and uh, they changed things around like on how you do your videos and everything so they got me uh, they got me a little bit baffled on 
how to even start these things and cut them off. I don't know why they do that. I guess it's like Rusty was talking about, you know, it's, it's, uh, they're paying these guys to, uh, write software for them or, you know, and so they have to justify their jobs. But, uh, the way I look at it, they're, uh, they're fixing something that wasn't broke to begin with, you know, and you don't ever want to do that. If it ain't broke, don't fix it, you know keep life simple guys so I think I see the let me put my glasses on here so I can see what I'm doing I drive better with my glasses off than on but I need to look at this okay I see it alright everybody peace out to you stay blessed stay positive Let's just do one day at a time, guys. Just uh, don't uh, don't be looking too too much forward in the future. You know, you wish your like my daddy used to say, don't wish your life away. You know, just live in the moment. All right, guys. Old Blanca, she's waiting at home. I had to run into Hazel and. Uh, pick a couple things up she's waiting at home for me so I'm going to get home and let her out she can do her number ones and number twos talk to you all later adios my friends bye bye